Welcome to Tech Brothers with Dame. Today we are going to learn how to load data from an Excel file to SQL Server table. So what I have for uh, this demo, a customer file with some of the records. So let's open this one and take a look. So what we have here, I have a sheet one that has uh, some records with these column names. So we have, we have ID, first name, last name, address, region code, join key, phone number and created data and uh, I do not have any data if I, I would have uh, that on multiple sheets and I wanted to load I have uh, different videos for you when uh, this uh, when the sheets are the same in a metadata or structure form how to load them and when the sheets are different uh, in structure how to load them so take a look in those videos as well so here we have only one sheet and we want to load it if I will get this uh, sheet uh, and I want to load to the SQL server table I will do some analysis and create a table from these columns so here what i see id ids uh, these are all the numbers and uh, i have first name that's all the characters last name all the characters address is a value that could be okay alphanumeric that can also be accommodated in walker and i have region code join key and all that so what i have done i have created a table so you have to do the same thing if you do not have the table if you have a table then you are good and you can start working with the SSDT or bids to create a package. Uh, here I have created a table with the same column names and uh, I have selected the data type for them. Now let's go to the SSDT and create our SSIS package. Right click on the SSIS packages in the solution. So we have here new SSIS package. I will be using the data flow task and inside the data flow task I will be using Excel source as my source is Excel file. So I will be bringing Excel source here, double click and then create a connection to the file. So I will be selecting the Excel version. In my case I am using Excel 2007. So I will be selecting that one, browse and then select the file from which we want to load the sheet so select that now hit ok the next part is uh, you have to select the sheet name there are multiple sheets in the one excel file so we have to select the one we want to load so in my case i want to load excel um, the, sorry the sheet one so i selected that one and then i hit on the columns so i recommend correct hit ok next part is uh, bring your destination we will be using oladb destination and uh, we will make the connection to the SQL Server table. Let's bring the OLEDB destination. Hit uh, OLEDB destination. Make a new connection. Here I have a connection already to the test database. I'm going to delete and create a new one to show you. So you have to provide the SQL Server name or instance name. Um, and then uh, you will be providing the database name in which you want to load the data you have a table in different databases so here you will be providing test database because that's where I have my table so I have table in the test database I will be selecting test database and we will make a connection so connection manager is ready hit ok now we will select the table in which we, we want to load the data here we want to load the data to the customer table so select that one go to mappings and now we can see that the columns are correctly map to the destination but there is one problem here uh, if I will hit ok that's a, that's going to give us some error why because the data is read from the Excel is, is a different data type and on the destination side we have different data type for those columns let's consider F, uh, F name so if I hover my mouse on F name on the input columns I see Unicode string DTWSTR length 255 so that's NWARCAR 255 on the other side I have a DTSTR that's WARCAR and length is a hundred okay let's go to the other one so we have phone number here that's read as a float here from the Excel and on this side we have a WARCAR 15 so Excel read or make a guess of those data type by reading first eight rows from the file so that how Excel uh, gets the rows. sometimes the guess 
made by the axle driver is not correct so we have to take a look on that part first uh, let's go back here and uh, do the data conversion so bring the data conversion transformation here you can use drive column if you want to do uh, write some expression and uh, convert the data I recommend using a drive column transformation but if, if it is straightforward data conversion you can use the data conversion uh, transformation double click on data conversion here we have used first name last name address uh, region code uh, and then we have join keys fine probably um, because it's uh, it should be number and, uh, and the destination we have number so uh, phone number and then uh, that's it probably now uh, what we see here we need to change these uh, columns data types uh, so for first name why what we want to do we want to say dtstr and then provide the data length so i'm providing 100 the same thing i'm going to do for others because i know that they are and uh, worker 100 so i'm making it and uh, address is also worker 100 so dtstr 100 here i have region code so the region code i know that it is only two characters and char and it is coming on this side i'm going to do one thing i'm converting this one to the string but i'm not changing changing to the exact data length i want to show you why and here we have phone number that is converted to the um dt uh, r8 that's the double precision float so i want to convert this one to the um, string as well because on the destination i have a um, worker 15 so i want to convert that one so let's convert this one 15. now we are all good so let's go back here what we see one thing we have to go to the destination remap the columns so i'm gonna say copy of first name copy of this name i, I recommend changing these names in the data conversion to the uh, some uh, say dc underscore name or some good names uh, this copy of names uh, might work for this uh, package but if you have multiple transformations and you are creating new columns uh, you will be confused uh, with this copy of name columns created in different transformations so i recommend changing that one to some good reasonable name uh, let's say data conversion one um, you know underscore first name so you would know that from the very first data uh, conversion transformation this column is coming so region code and we have phone number and that's it the date came kind of correctly we have dt date on the excel side and then we have dt db date on the uh, destination and looks like it is it came correct so if not we will take a look let's load the data and then we will find out uh, here see this sign is called warning sign so it is telling us okay copy of region code is uh, come in with more data and you, on your destination you do not have uh, that data length available for that column so uh, there is there is a possibility the truncation happen if you will get uh, a data length uh, or characters more than what you have on destination those characters will be truncated so what we can do we can fix that one so we have region code let's go back as we didn't do it by purpose i wanted to show you how the warning look like so now we know that uh, our region code should be uh, always should be coming as a worker 2 so or char 2 so i change this one to the 2 so we should be good now so now the warning is gone let's go to the table truncate it in just in case and see we don't have any record in this table let's load the data all 57 records are loaded correctly so let's go back and take a look the records are coming correct but one thing i notice here some of the records came as a null in the phone number so when you are loading an excel file i recommend that if uh, this part doesn't make really sense sometimes you run the package it's all green doesn't mean that your data is loaded correctly so you want to go back and make a comparison between your destination data loaded and your excel source here we see that in the phone number some values are coming null so let me open the excel and see what is happening so what i see here i see the very first record 
has some values it has a 505 and a hyphen and a 401 uh, and the rest of the number so it has a hyphen but it uh, it took uh, and this is the first record what we have here on the other side what it did it took that record fine but for the phone number it put the null so excel is reading this entire column as a float so remember when we are doing mapping here it said okay i'm reading this entire thing as a float so that's where we converted this one in the data conversion to the varkar uh, 15 but that's not right because it is if it is common float it if even we convert it is fine but for these values where it has hyphen it will not be able to convert that so that's the one reason to handle these situations where you have alpha numeric or, or uh, hyphens and all those kind of things and you want to read them as a string one thing you can do you can go to the excel connection properties and then go to the a connection string and go at the end so hit here and then press end button on the keyboard then here come right in front of the yes put this separator and then say i m e x is equal to one by putting this one we want this excel to read these alphanumeric values as a string so before that it was reading as a float for the, our phone number now it will read as a string so when we did that part it showed us this uh, uh, warning sign right away so we have to kind of refresh uh, this part again so double click on excel source and it is telling us okay the metadata information for that column has changed uh, because we did the pro property change and we want this one to read as the alphanumeric or a string so we said okay yes now we go back to columns we don't we are not doing a whole lot here we just refreshing the uh, our source so hit ok now we are all good here so we have to go to data conversion we have already and taken care of that part uh, and now hit ok and with the in destination we do not see any warning so it's mapped correctly let's go back here and truncate our table one more time and uh, run our ssis package come back to the SSMS and run the select query to see the data this time the data came correct so that's how you will be having some problem with Excel and you have to take care of one problem at a time there, in this case the date come uh, right there could be possibilities you will have date maybe you have a year in a separate column a month in a separate column or a um, day in the different column and you have to concatenate that and create a date from that so you will be using drive column transformation and um, concatenating those values and uh, casting them to the dt underscore db date so you have to use data conversion or drive column when you are loading your excel to the sql server table um, I will say all the, I wish you all the best working with the Excel um, whenever I work with Excel I mean there are some certain problems we face that I have made uh, other videos as well where you will uh, tackle those when you have more than uh, maybe thousand uh, characters uh, in some of the column uh, after the eight line uh, eight rows so in those cases uh, excel is going to read uh, the first eight rows and make a decision okay these are the uh, n worker 255 but you have some data values or data points uh, on the row number maybe 100 that will have more than uh, 255 characters so excel is going to ignore those uh, records so i i have explained uh, that uh, how to tackle that or uh, create a template with the first dummy record or uh, you know you you set the registry setting uh, guest type rows uh, um, in the registry to handle those situations so i recommend uh, watching those videos as well uh, thanks very much see you in next video